everyone, it's Alex of Alex's English class. Today I'm going to introduce you about size. Let's say we drop a mouse and a dog and an elephant from a skyscraper onto a stack of mattresses and the mouse stumbles around for a minute and then goes pretty annoyed and the dog breaks all of its bones and dies. The elephant explodes into a red puddle of blood and insides like organs and muscles. So, why does the mouse live and the dog and the elephant dies? This is because of size. Size determines everything from how we are built and how we experience the world and also how we live and die. This is because the physical laws are different for different sized animals. Okay, let's say there's a theoretical circle-ish animal that is the size of a marble. This has its length and its surface, that is skin, and its volume, like its organs, intestines, or stomach, or everything you need inside your body. So let's make this marble-sized animal to the size of a basketball. Then the length grows 10 times, surface grows 100 times, but its volume grows a thousand times. This means that the insides grow faster than the outsides. So the volume makes up mass. So the more volume you have, the more mass you have, and the more less volume you have, the more less mass you have. However, if you have more mass, the more impact shock is if, when you fall from the sky. So, if your volume is less than the surface area, the impact shock is distributed and also the air resistance slows you down. However, an elephant is too big that its impact shock cannot be distributed and the, even the air resistance can slow it. So that is why the elephant exploded. However, small animals seem to be immune to falling down, but they also have something that they are not immune to, which is water. It's actually some gravity that is making the water stick to each other, but this is very harmful to small animals, while it's not even harmful to us humans. So if you go inside water, if you are the size of an ant, you'll probably be sucked in and drown. So, insects have some kind of wax on their exoskeleton and other actually bees have fur on them so they're water repellent. Others have really tiny furs that are water repellent. Also, when they go inside the water, the oxygen stays inside the small furs. And also, when these oxygen become carbon dioxide inside the water, the oxygen can go inside the insect's body and the carbon dioxide can diffuse out which is like a lung inside the water. And also, do you know about pond skaters? The pond skaters can float on water. And do you know how they can actually do that? It's because of small hairs on their feet. Okay, so today I introduced you about size. Okay, bye-bye, see you next time.